I think it's safe to say that when you think of overlanding, Hawaii is likely at the bottom of your list. After all, a string of Pacific islands isn't ideal for long distance off-road travel. That being said, the beauty of Hawaii is worth exploring, especially with a four-wheel drive. If you are visiting Hawaii and looking for adventure, I've put together a few tips to help you get away from the crowds, which I think is the most digestible way to share this video instead of coming across like your typical 20-something travel vlogger holding hands and running in the sand towards the sunset. If off-road and overland adventures are your thing, then now is a really good time to hit that subscribe button. Every week I publish new adventure videos, and as much as I wish they were all in Hawaii, most of them take me to some of the best camp spots in Utah and the surrounding states. To convince you to hit that subscribe button just a little bit more, I want to let you know that I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the 4th of July, 2024. And right now, as it stands, we won't hit that goal by that July deadline, and we can only make it with your help. So please, subscribe. As this is one of my final videos of 2023, it is worth reminiscing a few of my favorite trips this year that took me and my wife to the island of Kauai. Plus, if I get this video out before the end of the year, it's a write-off. So, mahalo for watching. My first Hawaii tip is to rent from Drive Diff. Drive Diff is primarily known stateside for their off-road rentals in Telluride, Colorado. And just like their 4x4s in Colorado, their Hawaiian off-roaders are all newer model years and they have minor modifications to ensure you return to the resort in time for dinner after a day on the trails and beaches. I've spent seven hours getting here and in 45 minutes, I'm gonna be back in Kauai picking up another Jeep from Drive Diff to hang out on the island for a week and just do some exploring. That looks like ours. After a long day of flights and chasing luggage, there is nothing better than arriving at the airport to be greeted with a personal sign and white glove taxi service. The drive is only about 15 minutes from the airport and Jay, our driver, was incredibly friendly and knowledgeable about the island. His tips on places to visit made the long day of flights and layovers feel like a distant memory. We discovered Drive Diff right before our first trip and rented their Rubicon Wrangler with the Extreme Recon package. The color wasn't exactly my first pick for a Jeep, but for an island Jeep, I think it fit right in. This time we wanted something familiar, so we went with the red Rubicon Wrangler, just like my old Wrangler, Cool Rick, and we opted to add the additional beach chairs and an umbrella, a lesson learned from our first trip. These are a must and they make those beach days so much more comfortable. We got a key. And happy day. That was probably the easiest pickup ever. You land, 3GA's taxi service is waiting for you, drives you straight to the thing, get in, it's ready to go, unlocked. Super easy instructions, everything's done via text message. Now we're ready to go to bed because we've been flying for 10 hours today. There is something about Hawaiian views first thing in the morning, but this is just a teaser of what is to come on this trip. Our first day was mostly spent on this beach near our room. We went with a budget-friendly Airbnb, which I think was a mistake after we got there, and I couldn't change it because we were there. The proximity of the room to the beach was amazing, but because it was just an old hotel converted to a condo, there was mildew and a little bit of mold, and needless to say, we won't be staying there again. We're just getting ready to go to our first dinner on the island, and when I told the folks at Off Rome that we were working with the guys that drive diff to get a Jeep, they sent this little guy, which is a temporary cell phone mount. So if you're renting a Jeep, or even if you own a Jeep, this is a non-drill method to get your phone up on the dash and mount it like I would have in my Jeep at home. So we're gonna put this sucker on, and that way I'm not constantly fighting with my phone and I can use CarPlay and we can really get the most out of driving this Jeep around the island. The off-road mount is crazy simple to install. You start by removing the rubber coin tray and then there is a single screw, either driver or passenger side, wherever you wanna put the mount. Remove that plastic screw. It won't damage or alter the dash at all. It's really just a plastic adhesive screw. And then clip the mount into place, return the screw, and Bob's your uncle. You have a really easy mount that you can apply to a rental quickly or to your vehicle at home. The off-road mount has a 20 millimeter ball mount 
And because that's there, you can now add my all-time favorite phone mount and the sponsor of this video, the Peak Design Locking Ball Mount, for your convenience and to fulfill my end of a sponsorship deal. There are links to both of these in the video description. Go down there and, uh, and click on those. Maybe add them to your upcoming rental or even your Jeep at home. Now that you have your Jeep rented, you need to drive it out to the Jurassic Park gate. Yes, the exact location of Spielberg's iconic gate. I would say it's a fairly basic and maybe even a moderate trail, uh, but it does take you into the heart of the island, so you need to keep in mind that with an average of 42 inches of rainfall annually, Kauai is the rainiest place in Hawaii. So the water levels, they can quickly rise, and then there's mud, which can become a nightmare. So best thing to do is to avoid being stranded like Nedry, if you get the Jurassic Park reference there. Uh, we'll call him Newman as well. Uh, double check the weather before heading out. If you're looking to visit Kauai and you want this route, I want to let you know that I do share all of my routes and waypoints with my local Lander tier channel members. There is a join button below this video that will get you access to my private Discord server where I share all of the trail and info from my videos. We were lucky to have great weather on the trail when we went. It had rained the night before, so the water levels were manageable, and the mud, I would say, was easy because we had the Jeep just in four high to roll through those. Jumping into the passenger seat and seeing Hillary drive the trail without fear of large obstacles was actually a lot of fun. And I think she did an outstanding job getting us to the gate. And there it is. This has got to be one of the coolest places I've just off-roaded to. I wish it was still here, but you can see it. Like you can see that mountain behind it. That's totally it. 30 years ago, this looked a lot different. All the helicopters. How oh, cool. Not exactly the same as it was 30 years ago in the movie, but the feeling of being here, it's nostalgic, and it brings some reality to the film after watching it again. Plus, with a little bit of imagination, you can hear the dinosaurs in the distance, and you can imagine that the helicopters overhead are helping regain control of the island. But back on Earth, and in reality, those are tourist helicopters. And while we didn't take advantage of them on our first trip, we definitely did for our second trip. Which brings me to my next big Hawaii tip, get the helicopter tour. Yeah, buddy, I have never ridden in a helicopter before and my friend, hi Aaron, who was once a helicopter pilot on Kauai, recommended the doors off flight with Airborne Aviation. They didn't sponsor this or anything, I paid for it. Uh, but this is a Hughes 500, and as a small helicopter, it was perfect for my wife and I. On the advice of Aaron, we booked the whole helicopter, which I think is a big deal because it ain't cheap. This one-hour tour for the two of us was over a $1,000. And the only reason we splurged was because uh, it was my 35th birthday. Happy birthday, Justin. And we saved so much on our stupid Airbnb that we could afford the tour. Even though we spent so much on it, the flight was the highlight of the trip, and revisiting this footage makes it worth it all over again. The tour starts at the Lohui Airport and then circles the island clockwise until cutting across another iconic Jurassic Park location. This is the field where Laura Dern and Sam Neill first see the dinosaurs. You know, it's that iconic shot where he turns her head while he's standing up in the back of the Jeep and says something like, they do move in herds. That was right here. From there, we pop over a mountain, you know, because it's a helicopter, and then we drop into the canyon where the helicopter from Jurassic Park lands. Uh, we take a little bit more of an elevated approach, but we do fly straight for the waterfall, just like they did. And at this point, I'm certain that you cannot visit Kauai without seeing something from Jurassic Park. Here's a little secret about Justin. I get motion sickness. I get seasickness. We went whale watching once and I got so sick I couldn't even look at the water. So when we booked this helicopter, I was afraid I would get motion sickness and the butterflies and all of that just from the height. But I didn't have any of that. Uh, there was nothing even remotely close to that, even when we were looking straight down into the floor of all these canyons. So if you're afraid of heights or if you're afraid you'll get motion sickness, hey, you probably won't. About the only time that we had turbulence was flying through this cloud towards the Nepali coast. The off-road enthusiast in me was dying to mark these roads on Onyx Off-Road to visit later, and if we had more time on the island, I likely would have taken the Jeep down every single one of these. 
who knows? Uh, at this rate, maybe we'll be back in another six months. I, I doubt it. But who knows? I didn't think I'd go twice in one year. And here it is, the star of the show, the Nepali Coast. The closest we've been to the Nepali Coast was on our first Kauai trip with that high-velocity yellow Ringler when we drove out to Polyhale. The drive to Polyhale is just as pretty as anything on the island, and before you know it, there are offshoots from the trail to the beach. So we saw one that didn't have any others using it, and we gave it a go. It was right here that Polyhale taught me a life lesson. Beach sand is not the same as desert sand, and I got a little ambitious trying to climb back out to the road, and I got stuck. Knowing that the Jeep from Drive Diff had an onboard air compressor, it meant that we could air down and gain traction and climb out of our mess. Well, I thought we could climb out, but again, lessons are being learned here. Climbing out of this uh, isn't working. I'm gonna cruise down the beach where there's somebody else set up. There must be another way out that's not as steep of a, a climb. And if nothing else, if we can kind of make friends with them, maybe they have a toe strap or some max tracks to help us should we need to get out. But we want some beach time rather than making sure we can get in and out this whole time. So we're gonna cruise down the beach. After those attempts, we stopped trying to climb the hill and decided to drive parallel to the tide. Now that the Jeep was out of four low and we were aired down, I was able to gain enough momentum and traction to keep cutting through the sand until we found a better entrance to the beach. Great freaking news. We found the way out. So way less of an incline heading out this direction. That puts us back on the main trail. We're gonna go back out to the beach now. <laughs> Boy. It's pretty hard stopping when you have a rental and you know how to drive on sand and you just don't have max tracks or a winch or anything. So being extra cautious, getting ourselves down to a lower tire pressure and then finding less of a slope. That was the magic. Let's go enjoy some beach time. Oh my gosh, I could use a few minutes of relaxation. Swimsuits are on. Oh, oh, I was stressing out. I was stressing out. I'm gonna lay out some towels and just enjoy this. This gave us a great secluded spot away from everyone to enjoy one of the best sunsets I have ever seen. But that amazing beach and sunset was only a taste of the Nepali coast. Back on our helicopter tour, we experienced the entire Nepali coast in one jaw-dropping view. Talking about dropping things, I wanna give another shout out to this week's sponsor, Peak Design. Airborne Aviation and practically any other helicopter company on any of the islands will require a camera strap on every camera that is on the flight. And thanks to Peak Design, I could quickly attach straps to my A7S III and Hillary's A7C so we could both comply with the rules and get these amazing shots for you. As the flight wraps around the island's northern beaches, we cut inland again, crossing massive waterfalls and volcanic peaks as we work our way toward the caldera that formed the island. I know I'm going to butcher this, and to any native Hawaiians watching, please forgive me. But as we push into Mount Waialeale, I hope I said that right, the temperature, it instantly drops. And while conditions for the flight were perfect all around the island, the only sight that we missed was the collection of thousand-foot waterfalls cascading into the caldera, which is the namesake for this mountain, which means rippling or overflowing water. However, without the weeping mountainsides, the birthplace of Kauai is still one of the more reverent stops on our flight, and I think it's an appropriate finale for the tour. 
Leaving the caldera and cutting back to the airport, we take in our final airborne views of the island. With the airport in sight and knowing this is all minutes from ending, it's right here that I wish I had the means to become a helicopter pilot. The perspective, speed, and ability to reach the unreachable are all reasons for me to figure out how to chase this goal of becoming a heli pilot. And who knows, maybe one day. For now, let's get back onto the ground and let's head to the beach. There are plenty of beaches to visit and snorkel in on Kauai. Poipu and others near that area are great for kids and families, but we were fortunate to be given a secret beach the first time we visited, and we could not wait to make our way back to it again in hopes of seeing sea turtles in the wild. This beach has a sketchy hike down a steep, muddy trail, and it isn't easy to find even when you have the coordinates. Two key reasons why we have rarely experienced more than a small grouping of people on this beach and why it's our favorite beach. The last time we were here, the water was clear and the tide was calm. The conditions were perfect for snorkeling. However, there weren't any turtles. This time, conditions are different. The tide is rough and the water is murky. But would you look at that, a sea turtle. I'm not going to George Costanza this and say I'm a marine biologist because I'm not. So if you are, let me know in the comments if my current assumption is correct. I am hypothesizing that sea turtles feel safer from predators in this murky water, and that's why we saw one this time. Now, if snorkeling and tides and murky water aren't your thing, don't worry, I get it. At least you have those chairs and that umbrella in your Jeep that I told you to get at the beginning of this video so you can set them up and watch the surfers do their thing. Okay, I know that this video isn't my usual shtick and I know it won't be my first 1 million view video, but look at you, you made it to the end and if you're one of the 58.6% that aren't subscribed to my channel but you do watch my content, now is a really good time to commit to that subscribe button and help us hit 100,000 subscribers by the 4th of July. At the end of my videos, I like to leave a little Easter egg for those who did stick around to the end. And since you made it this far, if you wanna leave me a comment, start it with, happy birthday, Justin, and I'll make sure to respond to you. All right, that does it for me. So if you like this video, please like this video. If you have a question, leave me a comment. And if you wanna hang out again, well, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Justin B. McBride. All right, what's going on here? Are you looking for extra credit or something? You made it past the outro? You must really be looking for a good time. I have tossed up one of my favorite Utah adventures from this last year right here. And while you scroll YouTube's other recommendations and see if you really want to click mine, let's give a little thanks to the channel supporters scrolling on the left. Thank you to all of you supporters. All right, you can now click the video I suggested because whatever YouTube's suggesting to you, you clearly don't want to watch. Go ahead and click this one I suggested to you. See you in that one.